this item is a plan development amendment uh, requested by certain utilities. It's the same subject property as the plan development approval from back in December, uh, which was your November um, GLPC meeting. Our property is located on the east side of North Forest Street Extension uh, between Knights Academy Road and Branch Point Drive. The property is zoned R6, uh, currently vacant at the farm field. Uh, character area, suburban area, which is indicative of that whole general area. Uh, the city limit line you see right there in green, so it's right on the edge of the city limits in front of the of course. Um, aerial imagery, you see the plow field, you see the houses on the pattern to the right. Uh, that's the bio subdivision, I think that's called Green Hill Drive, uh, planted and developed about 13 years ago. Um, the applicant you've know, got the custody of all the vacant properties here east of course, um, including the field in between and then one to the north. Um, the plan long term, and this is what we talked about back in November, is to look at Green Hill Drive, replicate that pattern on the next strip of land to the west, and they were going to try and replicate that again for the third strip, but realize there wasn't enough depth in the property to do just that. It was a little bit squeezed. So the town the way to come up with a similar number of dwelling units we do it in a townhouse style uh, based on the master plan as opposed to a conventional subdivision. So that's what they had presented to you back in November. Um, subject property, you see the difference in acreages. And the uh, photos itself, this is the view from the corner of Branch Point and North Forest looking southeast through the farm field. You see the houses on Green Hill there in the distance. Another view from Branch Point looking down through the field. And these are actually the pictures from last fall. Um, closer view of the housing pipe there on Green Hill. And then the one house that's across the street to the south along Knights Academy, um, sort of a rural residential uh, house that is there. The old master plan um, for track one was the townhouse development. As you may recall, it was a series of townhouse buildings lined in the road with their backs facing North Forest, the driveway, and access on the interior. They were proposing a, a pretty good buffer strip between them and the future neighborhood, that is Track 2. Track 2 has not been built yet. And detention pond on the south, two access points, one off the North Forest, and then connecting into Branch Point. Um, the old plan called for building facade designs that looked something like this, townhouse style, um, double car garage doors, some articulation in the facades, a couple different styles they were looking at. However, now they're looking at it a little differently, um, and they're proposing a new master plan. And there was enough change between the old plan and the new one to just trigger a major mess. If it was a very minor change, we would talk up to what I call the 10% rule and move on. But under the new plan, there, instead of one long row of buildings along the west side of the property, they're proposing clusters of the buildings facing each other, um, turned 90 degrees in the more interior part of the site. So this is how it looks in black and white. This was in your packet from a week ago. Um, I received a rendered version of it, so this is a little bit easier to follow. So you can see the rooftops uh, where the driveways for the garage entries would face each other. The fronts of the buildings would face each other on a courtyard system so it would not be parking. So it would alternate a pattern. They've also added a community center at the north end of the property. Um, by rearranging the buildings, they were able to generate some additional space. So you have a command and pool area. Uh, remember when there was guest parking that was talked about back in the fall, where there was barely enough parking with driveway and garages to accommodate the units. We were worried about visitors. So they said 42 units. This would be 42 visitor spaces, at least on paper. Considered a paving optional. Um, they have replicated all those pieces of parts just under a new design, still 42 units, but they have changed the design and added the amenities. Um, so, in my view, this is definitely an improvement over what they were looking at back in the fall. So, there's the new master plan. Um, they've also looked at some new <coughs> building facade designs. This is how it would look from the front. And then the rear is a lot more plain. Uh, but you see the double car garages and the windows. And what I did is 
based on some of their descriptions and photos they sent me, I went out and found <coughs> where an Atlanta developer had built almost the same thing. This is in Lawrenceville. Um, this is from Google Imagery. And you see the larger buildings there kind of on the right side. Um, the differences are kind of interesting. This particular development, it's the same general design, but the buildings are three-story instead of two, and it is twice as dense. So what we are seeing is uh, six units in a row with an extra wide garage. This particular development has single car garages, and what in some ways looks like one townhouse is actually <coughs> two of them side by side, but taller. So it's a little higher density, which in Atlanta, sometimes you see that. Um, so I have some pictures. This is the aerial image showing the roof design. Um, the space in the buildings is a little bit different. You also notice these are seven townhouses deep. That translates to 14 dwelling units deep down each row, one of them being a little bit bigger. Um, as seen from the highway, this is what those buildings look like. Um, again, this is a three-story version of what's being proposed. Two story. Um, some different views zooming in on their version in Lawrenceville. They put some balconies over some of the units of the uh, garage doors. And then another view this is from the interior of the site, looking down the access path where this is the share drive um, way or alleyway with the garages and the doors. Um, and then this is the view for that development of the courtyard. They actually put a couple of guest parking spaces there. The applicant is not proposing to do that, but instead of have more parking elsewhere on the site. But this gives you a general idea of how the buildings would face each other. Uh, the applicant's facade design does not have porches across the front, but a little covered area over the front door. The other difference is applicants, I think it's 50 or 55 foot spacing between the buildings. Um, these are 80 feet. Um, and I think with a three story building, you can probably need a little more room anyway. But those are some of the differences. All right, so with that, uh, just like we did back in the fall, staff is finding this new plan development amended proposal consistent with the conference plan, consistent with the plan development review criteria, recommending approval subject to seven conditions. And these are mostly the same as what we had recommended for and was approved back in November and December. Just a few little differences, mainly to go with the changes in building design and site. We can go through in the detail if you'd like, if they were there in the packet, uh, all seven conditions. Do any of the commissioners want to hear each condition? So we're ready to move on. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, commissioners, any further questions for staff? Yes. Matt, are these uh, sale or rental of the computers? I understand them to be rental, but all that the applicant addressed that, <coughs> the stipulation is that the townhouses and built as individual units. And Otherwise, they are apartments, um, and apartments aren't allowed with R6O. Okay, and, 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 uh, did, did I miss it, or did you attach the uh, engineer and fire department uh, uh, their, uh, where's those, I didn't see those notes about what their comments were on this. I'm curious what the fire department, where they are, about a road and turn around and trying to get in out of 24-foot alley is beyond me. Yeah, if you'll notice, the fire department's comments are no comments at this time. <coughs> Which that really helped us a lot. It's less than helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I um, the, the, Which the, means... The previous design looked like it'd be more helpful for them. I mean, trying to get a 24-foot alley doesn't look real good. Right, and that is was a concern. Uh, we raised it with the applicant on the preliminary. They made it a little bit wider. It was 20 feet. So at least the width of a uh, parking lot was, I believe, with particularly on this side. A car parking the driveway is going to take up the entire driveway, and they're going to need room to back out and maneuver. So at least they made that adjustment. Um, our department, I mean, fortunately, these alleyways are not very long, so it's not too far for them to back out. But my guess is they will service the buildings from the shared driveway that runs next to it and run the fire hose up the alleyway. So what but do you that's kind of be reviewed during plan review. It's got to go through full commercial plan review. Hmm. But no, no 
comments ahead of time other than they apparently did not see anything glaringly a problem. But for this commission this evening, there's no comments, so there's nothing we can do right. about that regardless of our feelings. Right, and you see the comments from engineering. This talks about the 24 foot wide travel line typically required, and some of that is in review of what was being proposed before. And then suggesting why it would be better for the residents, and appears as if they were ready for it. So, so, not just an alley, but the total private drives on the 24 feet wide. Pavement, correct. And then add the 20 foot driveway on each side of that. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if the memory is correct, that this private drive will run the length of this, is it 24 feet also? Correct. And that will reflect on that drawing and the one before. Hmm. But in other words, minimum width for a two way driveway. Commercial drive or street. Residential type street. Any other questions for staff? <coughs> Thank you, Matt. Now we will open the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Commission. Matthew Inman, Banks Engineering Services, 4560E, Five North Drive. With Engineer for the Project. Um, Matt's going out of everything uh, very well, as always. Um, Franklin, to your point, as far as the uh, the building length, they're 22 foot wide and units, they're 6 foot long, so I think it's about 100, 130 feet, 132 foot long, um, so under 150 feet. Um, it is a concern um, of ours also, the way, the, the way we had it laid out design. Um, it's done, not in Valospa, but the first one in Valospa, I think they've done some about 45 of these other projects, and they found a way to confirm other places. We'll, we'll address that with the, the, the fire department. And with the uh, city engineer as best we can, but this, you know, it's, it's not a normal thing. We like to have it where we don't use, um, don't ever put the fire truck in reverse. You know, it's kind of our, our inside joke uh, locally. Um, but this one, you know, 24 foot wide street, that's a standard standard city street. Um, so we feel it's plenty, of adequate, plenty of adequate to get them back there. Um, they'll, they'll be able to get the fire out, but they have a little hard time backing up. They have, have to move cars around and put a couple back out. But, um, but it is 24 feet, and they're putting a, a one foot ribbon curve on the outside, so that even 24 feet, they'll be, have a little more to do to back up on, um, you know, if you look on the side, there's really, <clears throat> all the driveways there, there's really not much grass between, there's only a foot or two of grass there. You really, if you move the cars all the way, you have about a 60 foot wide path to get out, you know, so get there, get the fire out, and then, you know, whatever we gotta do to get the fire truck back out, we'll do that. Um, but it, as you've seen, you know, it's a uh, similar design that we had last time, 42 units um, with that. Instead of everything looking back and facing to Florida Street, they have the interior courtyard, um, much better for the residents. Um, a lot, a lot more scenic look for the people um, looking out of their front door. They kind of see another, another house in a courtyard versus looking at Fort Street, which you know, is a nice road, but it's probably not the best, best thing on the front door. Um, look at the days at Fort Street. Um, add a large cabana pool. Um, all the amenities they've added this. We've added more parking um, than we had before. So compared to what we had before, really, you know, other than fire issue, um, I think it's, it's improved in every way, and we'll work, we'll work with fire department and with engineering to to get that issue addressed most of the time. I think it's definitely an improvement. Um, while the other project layout, I mean, I like but the um, concept. It was very boring. Yes, um, and this does uh, create some amenities for the homeowner, so I, I love it. And, and, I, and I would echo that, too, as far as the, uh, the appearance, the curb appeal, and the use. I, I think it looks very nice. What, what I'm concerned about is there's a piece of property on Jerry Jones that has been brought to this board numerous times over the last six or eight years, and some beautiful drawings have been rendered, has been done. You might have been a part of them. I'm pretty sure you were, maybe. But there's always been a concern about the fire trucks, and you know they got to try to and they got to back into a a trash dumpster area. And for some reason, it's always been turned down because we have this fear of the fire trucks. And I don't see it here, and I'm concerned why we don't see it here. We've seen it on this particular property. I'm, I'm just confusing to me. It, yeah, and to be honest, you know, I, I'm not a fireman. I don't pretend to play one on TV or anything. But you know, if you stop the fire truck at the end of the building, you got a 120 foot hose pull is the maximum you do anyway. Stay on the main road, you don't have to pull those, those individual drives. Yeah. 
Unless it's only in you, 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 you might can, get it. They might be better just down the main road. road. They, they, they might not want to get a big plug. The fire, the fire, like our fire department is great. We, we probably, we probably are suffer in design on our fire department. Those guys can put the fire out. And that's their main job. If it's a 120 foot pool, those guys are more than capable of pulling the hose 150 foot between the building. Park at the end of the building, just pull a hose, put the fire out, get back on the truck and leave. We're making it possibly harder to have to be for those guys. I oh, I get it. I do. Yeah. I, I do. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just trying yeah. to. I, 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 I understand yeah. why we've turned things down in the past because we're concerned about the fire truck backing up. Frankly, you know, I've sat in those meetings and said the same thing. We, 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 we've added roundabouts and turned around the handle heads yeah. for yeah. leaving one building and possibly they need to. Yeah. And that's the fire department. Let, let, I, I won't speak for the fire department because I mean, they might have to put up more. Uh, they, they do a great job. I want, them, I want them available. But on something like this, it was 120 foot, 100. I'm sorry, 132 foot long building. I don't think it's really that big a deal. Because, um, I mean, you know, if you tell those guys they got to pull a hose of 200 feet, they hop in the truck and pull a hose 200 feet, they're done. They're, they're, they're going to knock it out. So, um, these little short drives like they are, I don't know that's a problem. They, they didn't mention, like, like Matt said, um, they're usually pretty quick to come if they got a big problem. So, they'll, they'll tell us quickly they've got an issue with something. Trust me, I know where, because I, I deal with ingress every day with windows and doors of homes. Yeah. And you ask the fireman, are you going to be able to get that sash through that window? The answer is yes. yes. No. I'm going to take my axe and knock the window in. I'm not worried about raising the sash. Yes, sir. Because, so we're worried about a bunch of stuff that we shouldn't worry about. That. But I'm just, yes. just confused about why we turn stuff down and then we'll also know. Yes, sir. <coughs> well, I sympathize with Commissioner Bailey, uh, but unfortunately, the fire department has not spoken, although I disagree with that. They should have spoken yes, before it came before this commission, but since they haven't, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Emma? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? Anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this case? <coughs> anyone that would like to speak in opposition to this case? Hearing none, that will end the public hearing portion of this case, and I will go back to the commissioners for discussion or a motion, whichever comes first. Commissioners? Well, and I said you on some pre-discussion that, that I would say I agree with you, Mr. Chair, as far as it doesn't seem quite fair to bring this to us without the comments that we need to make a, a decision. So, so for that reason, I, I can't be in favor until I see the comments. To address that, they did not, not issue comments <coughs> or comments that they issued were no comments. So that tells me they had no issue. Or they would have said it at that point. Yeah, the truth is, no, they, they <laughs> did not <laughs> reply when everyone else did. I sent a follow-up email to the fire marshal saying, you know, what, what say you? And then he immediately replied back and on all of these cases, uh, no comments. That tells me there's no problem. I mean, hopefully that will That's how I over it. during the plan review process. Right. So Commissioner Bailey, is that a motion to design? No, I just I just you just up the discussion so okay. I'm Mr. Matt, was that the chief of the department? It's the fire marshal that reviews plans. Um, and if you look at the comments page of the packet, I mean there were several departments that did not respond at all this time, and that's not that unusual. It's, One of them being the police department, you see no comments received. They generally do not reply unless they've got a concern. And, um, I, and I've heard the comments. Both, uh, I was a volunteer fire department, and it's not as easy to pull those holes down the street. So it's not as easy as they think it is. So we need to be thinking about, you know, convenience also for them. So we'll make it difficult. And I think the fire marshal or the chief uh, should have uh, made some comment, whether it's negative or positive, other than no comments. Now, I'm not a fire expert, um, but one of the things that I, you know, will sit in meetings and I try to pay attention and learn a few things. The number of units per building tells me that they're all going to have to be fire suppression systems in them. So maybe that helped, you know, not having as many concerns. So there's at least some level of protection automatically with the buildings. Um, but part of the condition is they've got to have fire rated walls to be single family attached. Um, this is only wouldn't allow otherwise, so that helps a little bit too. So maybe that weighed in on the fire marshal's opinion. I, I don't know. Is there any other discussion among 
commissioners, or is there a motion? Do we have a motion? Or Mr. Just, Chair, okay. I'm happy to make a motion. Okay. Uh, item number VA 2023-04, out of number five on the agenda, <coughs> I make a motion that we approve the change to the plan development. With the seven conditions. I'm sorry, with the seven conditions stated. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Roundtree. Second. Second from Commissioner Ball. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Same sign. Thank you. All right, last on the agenda is.